My friends, I've got a familiar instrument in my hand. It's a mandolin, and this is an Epiphone, and it's in for a setup and a full meal deal. We're gonna scallop the fretboard and maybe replace this bridge, do quite a bit of work to the bridge on this, and get her all up in tip-top shape. We'll tell you all about it right after this. friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop with this Epiphone Mandolin and we might as well just get started by taking the strings off this thing and get her set up. Well, the first thing I noticed is that the uh, customer has left his little tuner on here. I'm not exactly sure how this is designed to come off, so, oh, I see it. Pull that little lever and then that loosens it up. So I'm going to put this in this case so I don't lose that. And then the way I'm going to start is just by loosening all these keys here. enough of the tension off that uh, I can just go ahead and cut this and get the strings off here. These are very old strings. We're definitely not going to be reusing them. This uh, up here would annoy the heck out of me, but not only is this not a good idea in my opinion, I see lots of people do this. I'm not picking on this particular customer. This is not unique. Lots of people do this, but it would really annoy me just for the simple fact of trying to change the strings. I mean, they're, they're just all in the way, but the main reason not to do it is because it creates other vibrations in your instrument and noises that uh, you just don't want to be hearing. I don't know, I'm just going to start whacking here and just getting rid of this stuff. It, it's easier for me just to cut it loose than it is to mess with it. Now the only problem with that approach is that it leaves the strings on the posts here, so I've got to get the strings off the posts. But, like I said, I, just, I don't have a lot of patience for those kinds of things. So, to me, it's just quicker to get rid of it and get it out of my way, and then I can just deal with the actual string here itself, and that shouldn't be that bad. the strings are off. Well, we know we're going to scallop this, so we could probably just start right there. We'll, we'll just start by pulling these frets. Now, ordinarily, I'm very careful pulling these things, but since we're going to scallop this, this doesn't really matter. We can just yank them out pretty much. And if it chips out, it's no consequence because we're going to cut all this down. And right now, these aren't chipping much. A little bit, but not too bad. I always take out all the decoration frets and just leave the full length frets. I'm not used to having these pick guards on here when I scallop this out. In fact, I think it's going to get in my way because I need to come in from both sides. So I guess I'm just going to go ahead and take this off as well. Fortunately, I have my little <coughs> crescent wrench here that will fit this. Whoever thought this crescent wrench up was really smart because it fits both uh, metric and standard uh, US threads here. So, you know, no problem at all. It just fits right on there. And of course, I'm kidding. Okay, here we go. Let's take this little screw out. In fact, I probably could have just taken this screw out. Now I rethink this. I might not have had to take the other little nut off, but it's probably just as well. And now we'll work this out of the holes. Hopefully it's just stuck in little holes. Yep. And one of the pegs came out of here and the other one stayed in the the neck there. So we'll just live with that. All right, we're plugged in and ready to go. Wow, 
that's turned up way too fast for this operation. Well, it's working, but it's going kind of slow. Not quite sure why it seems like it's taking a little more than normal. It seems like it's building up on this sandpaper for some reason. It usually doesn't do that. I'm gonna have to try another approach. This is just not working very well. It's just building up. Well, I tried this one. Uh, this is a different mandrel, and it's even finer sandpaper, but for whatever reason, it's cutting it much better. Uh, I just couldn't get this one on the rubber as far as it needs to go. It's just the rubber's too large or something. And anyway, it's working, so I'm just not gonna question it and just keep going with it. The thing to watch when you're doing this is to try to keep the plastic along here the same level and the same thickness. I'm a little thinner on this side than I am on this side and that's kind of why you just switch back and forth and just kind of keep watching it close. It's working, it's just gonna take some time. I'm gonna probably have to switch this one out because it's kind of wore off. So I'll just do the rest of it off camera. You see the technique there. Well, unfortunately, the uh, fret slots are cut really deep. I can see that I could go a long ways and it still wouldn't be deep enough. So um, there's no point in going it much further. I feel like I've got it thinned down about as far as I should go. And I'm just going to take a single edge razor blade and go at a diagonal across this area to just flatten it out, get it nice and smooth and level. And then we're just going to have to fill the rest of it. It looks pretty nice. You could leave the lines there if you wanted to, I guess. But I, I think I prefer it to look smooth. So I'm gonna try filling it. And we'll just use this uh, Timbermate wood filler. Now this is white, but I just fill it with that and then go back and dye it. And it typically works pretty well. This stuff dries pretty fast. It doesn't shrink very much, which is a big plus. You can get this in all kinds of colors. And if I had enough colors in stock, I'm sure I could probably uh, do this without having to go back and dye it. But it's just easier for me to keep one color filler and I have multiple color colors of dye because I'm always using the dye for all kinds of purposes. So I already have a heater running down below my table here because it's cold in the shop and I'll just kind of hold this in front of that heater for a little bit to let it uh, dry this up really fast. Okay, this is pretty dry, so now I'm just gonna sand it real smooth. I've got some 220 here. So there's what she looks like after the sanding. And now we will try to treat it with a little bit of dye to make it blend in. This is the hard part. Well, I, I didn't have the camera on, I thought I did, but I just uh, used some black dye and went over it because most of the fingerboard has been dyed black, I believe. And then I'm just gonna scrape it with single edge razor blade right here on the edges to clean up the edges to get rid of the dye. So 
So that looks pretty good. Doesn't look too bad. Yeah, it's probably not a perfect match to the rest of it, but it doesn't look too bad. And with the strings on there, I don't think you'll even notice it. Since this is in for a full meal deal, the next thing to do for me is to make sure the frets are all level. And before I do that, I'll look down it and make sure the fretboard looks pretty flat. And it does, it looks pretty darn flat. Trying to decide if the neck looks straight on it. It looks pretty good overall. All right, so I'm just gonna lightly go across here and, and I can feel it jump from here to about here. And so there's, there's high spots there, like right there it got loose and then it jumped. Now it's hot, hard again. So anyway, that just tells me it's not perfectly level. So we're just gonna level it up. Okay, so I got it fairly level. Now I'm gonna round off these ends. Okay, I have the frets pretty level, so I'm going to recrown them now. Once again, I round them off like this, rotate that back and forth. I don't want to take height off the top. I'm trying to round them off, not take anything off the top. This is 800 sandpaper, so this will get them nice and shined up. The fretboard on this is perfect, so I don't really see any reason to scrape the fretboard itself. So therefore I'm covering it up and just doing one fret at a time. Now he wants a deer antler saddle for this also. I'd say that's a good thing, except for the fact that I don't like this bridge. It's, it's really just a piece of junk type bridge in my opinion. The bridge fits really good, so I'm torn on it to be honest. I don't think changing the bridge is gonna change the sound all that much. If the, if the saddle fits on this old, on this, old bridge, I guess we'll use it. If not, I think we'll put a new bridge on it. Yeah, it's not gonna fit. It's off by half half the hole. So I don't really like these bridges anyway, so I think that's it's probably worth just switching it out. It's gonna take a little bit more time, a little bit more effort, but overall it'll be a better job. It was good news, bad news, or bad news, good news. The bad news is I didn't have another bridge in stock, a new one that is. But I did have an old used one that is very similar to the ones that I use. And it's a much better bridge, in my opinion, than this one. Because this is real ebony and this is not. And it's not too far from fitting the top. So I think we're good to go. And I won't charge them for this because it was one that was given to me by one of our viewers. And therefore, he gets it for free. I've got some 220 sandpaper and we will hold this in place and sand it till it fits this top. You notice I'm not going very far. I'm just kind of staying in one place there, just moving it very slightly. And this will make it conform to the top very well. And I can also control the lean and so that it doesn't get the edges rounded off. By going forwards and backwards, you'll round the front and the back off a lot of the time where this way I can keep it perfectly square and perfectly flat. This one actually has quite a bit of lean to it, so I'm straightening it up a little bit. It's leaning to the back, which is I, my preference. I would rather have it lean back a little bit than forward, but it's a little more than I would prefer. Let's see how it fits there now, what it looks like. Quite honestly, it fits on the ends better than anywhere else. I'm gonna take a little bit out of the middle of this. I'll do that with the Dremel tool. And I think I'll pencil in 
just kind of a symmetrical area that I want to take out. It's getting pretty close now this you can see here there's two places of contact and here there's one solid contact so I'm working on this side the most I think that's gonna work just fine I got a little bit of work to do to this saddle this is a rough saddle that's just been you know machined it's not got the fine details sanded out and all that kind of thing yet so I got to clean it up a little bit and put the grooves in it but otherwise that looks pretty good to me. I think uh, I think we're good to go. The strings I'm choosing for this mandolin are the LS250s from GHS. These are silk and steel. They will give it a nice woody tone. These tuning keys on this mandolin turn backwards to the standard, so it's a little bit complicated when you first start messing with it. Well, I'm not going to let the camera keep running here while I'm putting the strings on. I'll show you where we're at as soon as I get all the strings on it. Well, I got the thing tuned up and I set the intonation. And just for a brief explanation of intonation, in case you're not familiar, you tune the string open to the note. This was a G. Then you note it at the 12th fret. And the G should sound, sound the same. And it should register the same on the tuner. And, you know, I had talked about the relativeness of that. In other words, let's say you don't get it perfectly on the note for whatever reason. Maybe you're just fighting it, but it's just a hair, like right there, it's just a hair shy of perfect pitch. Just a hair. When I hit the 12th fret, I want the needle to stay in that same spot. I want it to be just a hair shy of perfect uh, pitch. It doesn't really matter. I mean, if you get it perfect pitch, that's great. That's better. And then when you note it, it should be perfect. But regardless, if you're having trouble struggling with it, then it should stay in the same place. So when you note it both ways. So right there, that's just about perfect. It's maybe a hair sharp now. And it's still just a hair sharp. So that's, it's really good. stretching a little bit for a little while. This already had some felt on here which is good but I'm going to put a little piece of felt on this as well. I think the uh, setup went pretty well on this. the very first tune I ever learned on a mandolin. I can tell you for sure 40 plus years ago that was a whole lot easier to do. Well now that I've played it for you we're going to uh, put the pick guard back on it. I'm not big about with uh, pick guards on mandolins anyway so it's easier for me to play the thing without the pick guard on it because it gets in my way quite honestly. I slid it back on there it's really easy to slide the two pins back in together and now I'll turn it down here and we'll put the rest of it on. Okay, so we got this back on here. I'll put the little screw back in the hole. So she's all finished, looking good. I hope you've enjoyed seeing the setup on this mandolin. It went pretty smoothly. There wasn't a whole lot to it. Just kind of the same old thing all over again. If you've enjoyed my video or 
If you've enjoyed any of my other videos, I would appreciate you giving me a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet subscribed, be sure to do that too. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.